Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. First, I'd like to thank the, the member from Spadina, Fort York, for that fantastic campaign speech. And I'd also like to thank I would also like to thank the member from North Island Powell River for the actual passion she has on this. That being said, I personally cannot support this, this bill, uh, which would be the right to housing under the framework of the Canadian Bill of Rights. Unfortunately, I'm concerned that this bill does not actually combat the real barriers, and those are actually the barriers that our, our member did, from Spadina, Fort York, did focus on. That housing is in the face. It fails to deliver the necessary measures that are needed to help Canadians who are hurting the most. First, I'd like to say in a word in regard to the style of the bill and how it does not properly take the current state of the Canadian Bill of Rights into account. And to be honest, that is one of the key issues that we looked at as a caucus when we were discussing this. What is the Bill of Rights? What was put forward by the Honourable Prime Minister John Diefenbaker in the time that he wrote this in 1960? And what is the significance of this amendment? While I appreciate the difficulty that the sponsor of this bill must have faced in forging new ground by seeking its amendment, I have a few issues with the language specifically to Bill C-325. Primarily, the framework that is set out of the Bill of Rights is a prohibitive, a prohibitive one. So if we were to look at what the Bill of Rights had said back in 1960, put forward by Diefenbaker, it is not things like housing that would be included in this. The Prime Minister understood the framework and the purpose of the Bill of Rights and was to expand individual freedom and protect them against the long reach of the government. Here we're talking about a long reach. This now becomes a very short reach of the government if we were to start enshrining it into the Bill of Rights. The point of the Bill of Rights was ensure that Canada would continually be a society of free men and free institutions. All of the rights currently present in the Bill preserve rights of the individual by ensuring that the government cannot interfere with the practice of those rights. They include freedom of religion, speech, assembly and association, among others. So that's why I think it's a very key point that when we're looking at this bill, that we see the writing of the bill of Bill C-325 and how it does not actually fit into the Bill of Rights that was put back in 1960. The reason is that the right to housing as outlined in Bill C-325 does not work within this framework and is potentially massive program and government intervention as a right. This activist role of the government is the opposite framework that the Bill of Rights possesses and would do damage to each rich history of the legislation, which it truly stood the test of time. We have had this legislation for over 50 years, and it continues to be vibrant. It continues to have a part in today's debates. Mr. Speaker, I disagree with Bill C-325 on more than just stylistic ground. The content of this bill naively assumes that Canadians' housing needs can be resolved with a single stroke, and that is something that we have heard from the member as well as the member of the government. It seems to forward the idea that as housing is a right and the federal government steps in, the housing concerns of Canadians will magically disappear. Unfortunately, the reality is much more complex than that. First, the bill completely ignores the shared jurisdiction of housing with the provinces and territories. Amongst uh, almost all federal funding that goes towards housing and homelessness initiatives is funneled through the provinces and delivered through the municipalities and individual housing cooperatives who provide housing to those in need. As it stands, the plan put forward by the NTP colleague would simply give an unreasonable mandate to the federal government in an area that is shared jurisdiction amongst our, our former fellow governments. It is also worth noting that it is a simple act of Parliament that the Bill of Rights is only to create rights that fall within federal jurisdiction. We are talking about shared jurisdiction between the provinces, territories and municipalities. And This Bill of Rights that has been put forward by the, uh, Prime Minister Diefenbaker is specifically to federal legislation, and this bill uh, rolls over all levels of government. The question then becomes, what is the point of this bill? Is it a simple token of sediment? Is it an attempt to seize power unilaterally from the provinces? I do believe, after listening to the member who have put this forward, hers is about passion, and I do not want to say that not her work that she is doing is not, uh, is not admired, but at the same time, we have to see what is the role of the federal government here, and how can we go forward with this? We need to look at the logistics. All of the issues that I've raised so far need to be taken into account. However, the issue at the core of this bill that does not make housing more affordable for average hardworking Canadians is, is a key issue that we're going to carry on to. Allow me to be clear on this. As a Conservative member and representing the Conservative Party today, we firmly agree that Canadians deserve a, reason, deserve a reasonable opportunity to own their own home and have access to safe and affordable housing. Unfortunately, we currently have a government who seems bent on making home ownership increasingly difficult for aspiring Canadians. Housing is one area where the truly damaging policies of this government can clearly be seen. 
By raising taxes, the Liberals have cut abilities for Canadians to save up for the down payment and mortgages. By hiking CPP payroll taxes, hardworking Canadian middle classers earn the Liberals pretend to help or forced to give to the government hard-earned money. And we see this more and more as we continue to talk about some of the proposed tax legislation that's being put forward. It's no surprise that Liberals feel that they know how to spend Canadians' money better than Canadians. But the damaging effects of government's entitlement mindset are clear when we see how regular people are crippled in their ability to make large financial decisions, such as moving towards permanent home ownership. The debt that this government is racking up is only looking to get worse, and Joe and Jane taxpayer are feeling the pain. When Budget 2017 was unveiled, it was apparent that the Liberals have no plan to make life more affordable for the regular Canadians. Although the Liberal often boasts about the purported investments in housing, it has largely turned out to be a game of smoke and mirrors. One of the foremost examples of the government's failure to deliver is the recent Parliamentary Budget Officer's report that clearly demonstrated how, despite big talk and flowery language, the government's money has not made much of an impact on Canadian families. Communities are not getting the funding that this government promised. The PBO's report even says that they don't expect the federal government will spend all the money on housing and infrastructure investments. That has been promised. More directly related to housing, the government has further burdened young Canadians who are working hard and aspiring to home ownership by tightening rules of obtaining a mortgage. What's more troubling about this move by the government is that it was done without engaging any stakeholders, including young Canadians. It will push home ownership more out of reach for Canadians and won't help affordability at all. To summarize, the government has tightened real rules requiring Canadians to move more to mortgage while simultaneously pickpocketing Canadian families through tax hikes, debt deficit, and create eliminations. Not to mention uh, slamming a carbon tax on living necessities for every middle class family in this country. And Mr. Speaker, this government is speaking out on both sides of its mouth. It seems to be striving to set Canadians up to fail in the housing market. In light of this, I can understand my colleagues' desire to step in and more clearly define the government's role in the housing through C-325, but adding it to the Bill of Rights where it does not belong and will not be, it will not be effective and will, fix, or, and will way too soon fix a broad issue. Instead, the federal government needs to be taking practical approaches that will empower Canadians to own their own homes. The Conservatives have a strong track record by making progress in this area. By 2014, the Conservative Party brought the low-income cut-off poverty rates to a historic low of 8.8 per cent, making huge strides in reducing poverty through fair-minded policies. Conservatives also expanded saving mechanisms such as the tax-free savings account, reduced taxes, and invested in responsible policies to bring home ownership within the realm of a possibility for every Canadian. The Conservatives invested over $19 billion through CMHC to improve the state of housing in Canada and began initiatives such as the investment in affordable housing and Housing First to empower Canadians and fight homelessness at a fundamental level. Last week, when I was doing a housing symposium in Ottawa Vanier, that is one thing I heard about time and time again. It was specifically on the Housing First and what an excellent approach this is. Does it need additional things put to it? Absolutely. But it is a great first step of what the, uh, the former Conservative government did in 2008, and we need to continue to build on those. The symbolism of this member's bill is understandable and somewhat misguided. However, if the federal government is serious about making home, or, home ownership for regular Canadians reality, it needs to seriously reevaluate its policies. Canadians deserve more action rather than more talking to make home ownership a reality. I know that a government member is likely to stand up in this House and brag about how much the money they're throwing in Budget 2017. But high taxes, reduced saving capabilities, strict rules on the market and expensive household items will not help Canadians and will continue to lock them out of this market. Broad-based relief for people when they are trying to own a home or seeking affordable rental housing is essential. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I'd like to compliment the sponsor of this bill for her attempt to make amendments to this well-crafted well bill that has never seen such additions. I thank you very much for having the opportunity to speak today, and as we move forward, I continue to look forward to the debate. Thank you.